thank you so much uh, to all the uh, panelists uh, for their uh, for their interventions. Uh, let me um, uh, let me say a few words uh, from my perspective. Uh, I've been uh, engaged in a kind of um, running commentary on the misuses of historical analogy uh, by uh, the Washington elite with regard to uh, their uh, war since uh, 2003. Uh, and so in preparation for this uh, talk, I, I went back to my archives and did some keyword searching. Uh, generally was pleased with myself um, uh, and my performance in, in the past. Let me just review some of the highlights of uh, what's, been, uh, what's been alleged uh, in Washington about the historical context or the historical analogies that could be made to their activities. Um, when uh, it became clear uh, that there was actually an insurgency in Iraq, uh, which Donald Rumsfeld resisted, uh, and I remember he slapped down Jamie McIntyre of CNN for suggesting that there was one in summer of 2003, and McIntyre read him the Pentagon definition of an insurgency and said, it doesn't that fit what's going on? And uh, as uh, P. Mansour has said, he was actually fighting one at the time, uh, and uh, Rumsfeld said, no, 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 this is not an insurgency. Uh, and, um, uh, Condi Rice uh, then uh, came out with this uh, allegation that um, in the aftermath of, um, this was in August of 2003, in the aftermath of the occupation of Germany uh, after World War II, there had been an organization, the Werewolves, that uh, had uh, fought a rearguard action against uh, the occupying powers. Uh, this was not true. Uh, that is to say, there was such an organization, and however, it appears to have been a few cranks, and it never killed anybody. So, it wasn't exactly like that. And I suppose, you know, I, if I were to stop speaking now, I, I could just have that be the, the thing I wanted to leave you with, with, with uh, leave you with, that, uh, that it wasn't, wasn't like what they were saying it was like. Uh, so, um, uh, another, uh, there are so many such examples but, uh, of, of the use of history by this administration. Uh, Dick Cheney, uh, in, um, uh, in July of uh, 2004, gave a stump speech in which he said that uh, terrorists are as determined to destroy America as the Axis powers of Germany, Italy, and Japan during World War II. Uh, borrowing a quote from the 9-11 Commission's report on the terrorist attacks of September 2001, the Vice President said the terrorists are, quote, sophisticated, patient, disciplined, and lethal. Quote, Cheney said, the enemy is perfectly prepared to slaughter anyone, man, woman, and child, to achieve these ends. Uh, this is not an enemy we can reason with. This is an enemy we must vanquish. Well, in principle, what Cheney said is correct. I mean, Al-Qaeda is out there, and it's very determined and disciplined, but it's not actually very much like Nazi Germany. <laughs> it's a little bit more like the Bader Meinhof gang, or Om Shinrikyo in Japan that tried to let sarin gas in the Tokyo subway in 1995 and was trying to kill several thousand people in that way. Uh, and, and the trick that Cheney plays is by is to focus on intentionality. <clears throat> the intentions of Al Qaeda and the intentions of the Nazis are, are likened to one another. But the scale of the threat is disproportionate, and that's not alluded to by Cheney. Uh, and this is typical, I think. Uh, I mean, we can find lots of have bad intentions, uh, whether we need to launch a war over that, this is a different thing. Um, and it seems clear, if, if you look at people like uh, uh, Zakaria Musawi or Richard Reed, uh, that these are, are crackpots. All you have to read this the transcript of the trials. And, and, and you know, uh, it's unfortunate that they got involved in, in terrorism, but otherwise they probably would be collecting 
uh, old uh, Coke cans on campuses, um, uh, and alleging that the government had implanted radios in their asses. Uh, so uh, this is, I guess, just not very much like Nazi Germany. Um, and um, moreover, Cheney said this at a time when he wasn't doing very much about Al-Qaeda, per se. Uh, all of, and when, he, when he made these statements, all of his activities were about fighting Iraqis, Shiites, who don't like Al-Qaeda, by the way. I mean, this is something that Washington has never seemed to understand, uh, that they're not all the same. Uh, and, um, and, uh, and, and fighting Iraqi Arab nationalists of various sorts and so forth. Uh, so, um, uh, it, it's, a, it's odd that he should put so much emphasis in his rhetoric on Al-Qaeda and likening it to vast governmental uh, uh, forces that the U.S. had fought in the past, and, and, and yet there's this total disjuncture between the actual activities of the U.S. military uh, under his influence. Um, then, of course, there's Malaya. We always have Malaya with us. <laughs> You, you kind of wish the British hadn't, you know, put down the communists in Malaya because it, it just keeps being thrown out by all the, the little war people. And uh, I was on a radio show uh, with Max Boot and John Mearsheimer once in the height of the Iraq War, and I have to say it was quite entertaining. Uh, um, that um, Boot started by saying that that Mearsheimer and I were being overly pessimistic; that it was World War II in 1942. And Mearsheimer said, no, it's not. So this is, a, this is a colonial enterprise. It's nothing like World War II. Uh, and Boot then went on, of course, since we brought up colonialism. He said, well, the British succeeded in Mal Malaya in putting down the communists in the 1950s. Well, Max, you know, it's not like that. First of all, the British had been in Malaya since the 19th century, and they knew Malay. Uh, they knew quite a lot about Malay society. Moreover, the communists were mainly Chinese.